This is a video tutorial version of the instruction manual for our SP8 Leica confocal microscope. Power-up steps consist of turning these numbered switches on in order. One, numbers two and five, two through five are here. Then you're gonna turn number two on. Allow one or two second gap between each switch. The fifth one is the key. And number six is chiller under the table. Once everything is initialized, you're gonna start the software. Right now, as you can see, the microscope is not initialized. Now it is. So once that's done, you launch LASX from the desktop. And there will be some options to choose. For regular confocal imaging, you're gonna leave these three buttons in off position. Make sure that the configuration is machine scanning stage and microscope is DMI-8. Click OK. And loading the software will take a couple of minutes. There will be one, answer, uh, one question to answer during this software loading and that question will be with regard to initialization of the stage. If you need to do a tiling experiment, then you have to answer yes to that question. However, if, if you want to answer yes, if, in other words, if you want to do tiling, you need to tilt the condenser arm back first because the stage during initialization will move around and there is a chance of bumping into into the condenser objective so in order to prevent that we're gonna uh, we are gonna turn the uh, tilt the condenser arm back so here's that question if you're not doing any tiling then the answer is simply no Alright, software launched. The first thing we're going to do is turn the lasers on. So go to configuration tab, laser config, and turn 405 and white light lasers on. Argon laser should remain off. And then go back to acquire. Click show sequential scan panel button. This is the sequential scan panel. And then from here we're gonna load pre-configured profile, which is on drive D in folder acquisition profiles. And from here you're gonna load this default profile. You can refer to the printed version of the manual to learn about the other advanced profiles. It'll take a few seconds. Now, as you can see, this profile is standard four channel or four sequence uh, imaging profile for DAPI, green, red, and far red stains. It's best to ch select the objective from the software because we have two 40x objectives and the control panel on the microscope does not distinguish does not show the immersion so it's best to select it here in this case I'm going to use 63x objective the next steps step is to load the sample Come to the microscope and 
the speed adjustments for the x y and z should be set to x y fast and on the z side z coarse and then this is the knob on the side of the object uh, microscope which raises or lowers the objective you need to make sure that the objective is lowered now it's going up now it's going down so towards you counterclockwise lowers the objective once it's in lowered position you take your sample in this case it is a sample of cells grown on a cover slip and sandwiched between a slide turn it over because it's an inverted microscope and place it carefully on the adjustable holder adjust the end if needed and then using the joystick move it around to center the objective with your sample approximately and then very carefully raise the objective it's best to use the fine step knob until you make contact with the oil when the contact is made oil will be spread out it's easy to see There you go. That's the moment of contact. So after this initial contact, pull the objective down just a little bit so that from that position we know to go up in order to find the sample. Put the condenser arm down. The next step is to find the sample and we're going to use this tab and select fluorescence mode we have three fluorescence cubes for DAPI green long pass and for the red there is no filter for the far red because our eyes do not detect far red wavelength so using the DAPI if you have DAPI stain look through the eyepiece adjust the focus and find your sample once you do that it's a good idea to to check the other stains just visually to evaluate the sample staining and then you're gonna select or hit CS button confocal scanning and the rest of the action will be uh, done in the software Next thing we're going to do is to optimize the acquisition parameters. The sample I have on the microscope does not have the far red channel. So while it's selected, I'm going to press this minus button to remove it from acquisition. So the optimization is basically setting up the laser power detector gain and selecting appropriate pixel size and acquisition speed. So four basic parameters. So we're going to do that in between frames mode because that's uh, practically fast and easy to do. Right now it's I'm on sequence two, which is the red channel. And if I go live, I will see image of the mitochondria on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is set up the signal level. This button over here can display the image in three different modes. This one that you see right now is saturation indication mode. If you toggle it, then it can show the image in grayscale or assigned color. So in this saturation indication mode, we're gonna adjust the gain in the laser power so that we have high signal but not saturated. The green pixels you see are pixels with zero signal and the blue ones are 
saturated pixels which are above this uh, higher limit of the detector range which is 255. So we need to make sure that we are close to saturation level but there is no saturated pixel. This pre-configured profile starts with 2% laser power which is um, good enough for well stained samples so that's why I'm not going to change the laser power because it's mild enough instead I'm going to decrease the gain in order to remove this saturation and there is a knob on the uh, control panel under the monitor which you don't see because I'm uh, capturing the screen so but that control panel has six knobs and six windows and if they are pre pretty self-explanatory you know what I'm talking about here you can see this uh, gain being changed because I'm turning the knob you can actually set it from the software you can slide this uh, sliding bar or you can double click and type in a certain number let's say 50 so the way to have the signal right under the saturation is to actually see some saturation in this case you can see some here some here and then lower the, the gain so that all the saturation disappears so as soon as you reach the value where no saturation you should stop there <coughs> and use that gain so about 50 percent gain is um, good for this channel as you can see there are two different types of detectors two pmt's and three high d's high d's are measured uh, the, the gain on the high d's are measured in percentage and the gain on PMTs are measured in volts so the absolute values will be different um, the practical limit on the gain for the high D's is about two, uh, 200 percent so with some sufficiently high laser power and 200 percent gain if you don't see any signal or the signal is very weak that means that uh, staining didn't work so you need to go back to the drawing board so to speak so we optimize the signal for the red now I'm going to repeat the same thing for the green as you can see I have no saturated pixels at all and the laser power is 2% and my gain is 100 which is the default starting value since 2% laser is uh, fairly mild I'm gonna increase it to let's say 3 or 4 now I start seeing some saturation I mean I could leave the laser power at 3 and have no saturation but I prefer go to 4 and lowering the gain just a little bit to avoid saturation because 4% uh, laser power is going to give me a you know, better signal and if you can have good optimal signal with lower gain then your noise is going to be lower but acquiring is it with a 3% I mean 3% uh, laser power and higher gain would still work quite similarly the, the, the differences between the two uh, approaches will be very minimal in this case so this is 4 and the gain is right where I stop seeing saturation let's say around 60 so the green is good and I'm going to do the same thing for the DAPI so DAPI is good I'm going to uh, so the laser power is 2% I'm not going to change it and I'm going to increase the gain you see the volts are going up so that's where the 
I'm starting to see some saturation and from there I'm going to back down where all saturation goes away. So that is an optimal signal. But make sure that you do this optimization step with the uh, full range uh, of the detector because there is this auto scale button and if it's pressed then the range is set to not for the uh, for the full range but to some portion of it then you can start seeing this false saturation for this uh, sub range of the detector capacity so make sure that it's reset and you optimize the signal for this full range of the detector once everything is done then uh, last thing would be to set the pixel size, acquisition speed, uh, and line average. So the pixel size is 361 for, <coughs> for this format. In the printed version of the manual, there is a table with resolutions of the objectives. For this particular objective, resolution at, let's say, 550 nanometer is approximately 240 nanometer. According to Nyquist criteria, the pixel size you should image with should be two to three times smaller than the resolution. And we can do that by having more pixels by increasing the format. Let's say 1024 by 1024. Now the pixel size is 180. And if I go to 248 by 248, now I am in the range that is optimal for acquisition but acquiring image this large will take a long time and sometimes it's kind of not practical especially if you're doing a lot of uh, snapshots and especially if they're not for <coughs> quantitation then you can uh, get away with 1024 actually 1024 is probably the, the most popular uh, format or the size. So the, our pixel value is still larger than 120 which is the higher limit of the range and in order to reach reach that optimal range I'm gonna add some uh, zooming in so now it's 120 maybe a little bit more 175 so right now I am at 103 nanometer which is kind of the middle of range between 80 and 120 nanometer which is two to three times smaller than the resolution of the objective uh, at uh, which is 240 nanometer so the pixel size is good now we have line average of three uh, you should use at least three um, using more averaging is going to decrease the noise but also will make the acquisition slower so the three is kind of the golden um, middle for both decreasing the noise and still being not too slow for final capture we're gonna switch to between lines mode and if I hit capture I should require three color image if you double click you can switch between four window view or single window view so that acquisition was done at the speed of 400 and as you can see with that speed the pixel dwell time is 600 nanometer if you go slower you are going to have uh, higher pixel dwell times and you're going to kind of collect more signal uh, however the acquisition is going to slow down so again 400 works for most cases <clears throat> if you want to do a Z stack acquisition what you would do is go live in one of the channels and that would probably not the best let's say green
and I'm lowering the Z position to set, let's say, beginning position, and then I'm going to go up and go past the best focal plane, set that as an ending position to move to the center to see the sample better. So now I set up a range between these shown values for uh, Z stack acquisition. And the Z step size was system optimized or calculated by the system using this equation at, for this wavelength. You can use that, or sometimes I like to do a little bit of oversampling, so I would change this to 0.25. Or point two. Um, then, if it's Z stack, then you cannot capture capture image button. Still takes one snapshot. Uh, make sure to switch back to between lines. And now I have to press start button. The start uh, executes this. Z stack experiment you just set up. So I'm not going to wait all the way to the end because it's just going to acquire all of the planes. Oh, by the way, this is the, uh, the auto scale button that I mentioned. So it is useful for visualizing the sample, but once you acquire this image and you are setting up the next one, make sure that you reset the range when you're trying to optimize the signal. So basically that is uh, all that you need to do to uh, start using or, is, or use this as a reminder for uh, acquiring images on the confocal microscope. Now, this part is about shutting down the system. So you've taken the images. You can rename the images and uh, save the project as you take images, or you can save it once at the end. Probably it's a better idea to periodically save during acquisition against uh, any crashes and things like that. So you can double click and rename it appropriately and at the end before closing the software you have to save the project. Right click and save project or press this button. So once the project is saved then you can close the software. It will take a few minutes to de-initialize itself. In the meantime, you can take your sample off the microscope. Tilt the condenser arm back. Make sure you pull the objective down before taking the sample out. There we go, and then carefully take it out. After taking the sample off of the microscope, you need to wipe the objective if it was the oil objective that you used. And for that, we're going to use lens cleaning tissue, never chem wipe and lens cleaning solution they are in this uh, dropper bottles next to the microscope so you're going to take once one lens tissue from the box fold it in half and then you're going to put a drop of that solution onto the lens 
tissue. We'll be using the two hands, so uh, I'm trying to demo it with one hand. And then basically with the wet part, just going to slide it over the objective. And then with the dry part, again, with two hands, you're just going to slide it over the objective, like such. There is no need to going back and forth or rubbing. So at this point, you can lower the uh, condenser arm, turn off the system. So turning off is reverse order of buttons, starting with six. We're going to go backwards. Five, four, two, and one. And final step is log off the computer.